there are some great things to have come out of Poland. Music by Frederick Chopin, a people carrier's worth of Nobel Prize winners and the racing driver Robert Kubica. By many people's reckoning though, great cars aren't amongst them. There is one person though who disagrees. This is Patrick Mikichuk. Think of him as myself, Tiff and Johnny all rolled into one because he's the anchor man for Poland's version of fifth gear. Like us, he's a complete car nut. Unlike us, he also collects them. In fact, Patrick is the owner of his very own private motor museum. There's a bit of everything here, including the odd aircraft, but I was particularly interested in the Polish classics he owns. So Patrick kindly lined up three significant models for me to drive. First up is the Warszawa. Who would have bought it? Would it be for a young couple or a middle-aged couple <laughs> or a family? In the 1950s in Poland, it's impossible to normal person have uh, a private car. The car was for government, from uh, special police, from normal police, but the normal, for example, John Smith can use bus, train, bicycle, sometimes motorbike. Wow. The Warszawa was also commonly used as a taxi, and although beyond the means of most Polish people, a quarter of a million of them were eventually produced over a 22-year production period. I feel quite sort of chic driving it, but also, you know, it's got old sort of agricultural performance. The maximum speed of this car is about uh, 95 kilometers per hour. I mean, clearly this is a very old car. The brakes, you know, are vaguely there. Every and... brake in this kind of car is working like that. Time for Patrick's next choice, the FSO Serena, affectionately known as the Little Siren. Unlike the Warszawa, the Serena was designed to bring motoring to the Polish masses and prices were kept down thanks to its simple construction and tiny 746cc two-stroke engine. Only two cylinders here. Yes. And it's yeah. running quite well. It's running beautifully, like a you know, little and motorbike the sound. engine. It's really, it's, it's a fruity little sound, isn't it? Okay, 30 kilometers per hour. Now we have 40 kilometers per hour. <laughs> now we are feeling that we have front wheel drive. Massively, I can feel the, it's almost like torque steer. But do you know what? This is very much like the Fiat, a modern Fiat 500. Yeah, of you course. You know, because it's got, you know, a colorful dash. It's got a, a beautiful dial straight ahead of you. It's got no airbags. Got no ABS. Uh, no. Don't have a belt. No, I know, no seat belt. What kind of person bought this car? Everyone wants to buy this car, you know? Uh, from, everyone from dream like... about this car because okay. everyone dream about new car. The Warsaw, yeah, it's impossible to buy. Serena, it's possible to buy and everyone dream about the Polish Serena. The problem was demand for the Serena constantly outstripped supply. So, for many Polish people, the car remained a dream. In fact, second-hand Serenas usually changed hands for more money than new ones. Finally, Patrick wants to show me a car that wasn't designed just for Poland, but to take on the world, the FSO Polonaise. Built under licence from Fiat, the Polonaise shared underpinnings from the fairly ancient 125 model, but other aspects of the car were quite up to date. Patrick, I've got a stereo. What's going on? You're spoiling me. We've got a stereo, we've got... Uh, Seatbelts. You can tell that, you know, it's the most modern car that we've driven today because the insulation and the soundproofing mm -hmm. is, is so much better. And you're starting to get a centre console now. I've got an independent seat. It's a typical car from 1980s. In fact, the Polonaise was a pretty safe car for its time, passing both US and European crash test regulations, allowing it to be sold in those markets. Who was buying this car? Everyone want to buy this car. We sell this car a lot of to Great Britain, to France, to Germany, uh, to Sweden. Construction of the Polonaise lasted 24 years, but eventually it could no longer fend off the competition from more modern manufacturers and production ceased in 2002. As for FSO, that eventually folded in 2011, which brings us full circle because the now derelict factory site is where Tiff underwent his rally training earlier in the show. 